Oh, I better do my music, right? I didn't have any music going at all, so let's get the music going here. Morning. Let's look at everybody here. Marilyn, look at your flowers. See the flowers I have there to share with everybody. Thought that was pretty cool. Um, one on the mantle and one on each side by the fireplace. So thank you to Einer and, and Marilyn Handerlin. And so I will thank them for that. And good morning to everyone. It's, it's another one of those days for the ducks. Happy fall. Happy to have you with us. Good morning, Edie. We have Anita. Uh, wow, three Anitas. Like everybody's here. Is there room at your house? And Irene is here. And hey, Judy. And uh, Kit and Manuela. Kit, your neighbor's with Margie. I think you're, you're, and Norma. Hi, Norma. Haven't seen you in a while. And Shirley is here and Sarma, Sarma and Sue. And there might be some few people popping in, but I'm going to close out the window so we can begin our yoga practice. Take my glasses off. So you remember that your body might be a little different today and you should honor that. So if there are some conditions, issues, don't feel like you have to do everything. Things that you can do, you should. And if you're feeling, you know, strong and, and ready to do some of the challenges, you can. So today's focus is going to be a little on hips. So we'll do a little work on the hips. Um, and then we're gonna do three variations of the pigeon pose. One that's the seated pigeon pose, you're familiar with that, most of you are. A standing pigeon pose, and we have done that one. And then within the last couple of months, I also gave a pigeon pose from the chair. It's more risky, um, it's deeper, it might be something you guys can do, but then you have the choice. So we're gonna be working on hips today. But let's just come to samastiti, that means just come to the moment where we just focus on the present, being here right now, pushing away all the distractions. So I'm gonna start standing behind my chair. So as I stand behind my chair, I still want to be the mountain. So I wanna be the mountain rooted into my feet, which are parallel. Though some people do like the feet together or big toes touching and heels out, so you decide. But most of us do well with parallel. And you feel the balance between all parts of the feet, front, back, side, inside. And then you draw up energy. So thinking that maybe there were a pillow between the legs, you don't have to smoosh it, but you want to hold it gently. So that brings some energy to the legs. Mula Bandha, pelvic floor energy. Uddiyana action, a scooting in of the belly without a tipping of the pelvis. A lifting of the heart. I have, I have a mountain on my heart, so lift up my heart, relax through the neck and the shoulders, feel the crown of your head, draw upward and the fingers to ground downward. So you stand like a mountain. And the first thing you may notice is how this feels really good to your body because we do have patterns in our body. You will notice it with other people that as they're standing there talking to you, the hips may go forward or they may slouch forward. So now we're working to correct that posture and be mindful and be the mountain. Next, you want to focus on your breath. So we traditionally use nasal passages if available, otherwise the mouth. You can have your eyes opened or lowered or closed. And just feel the breath, be aware of the breath. It's really nice that you breathe automatically. That's part of our autonomic system. But when you're mindful about it, you may notice it's a bit shallow. So can you expand your breath? And so as you exhale, that pushing on the belly to help get the air out of your lungs is useful. And then as you stand nice and tall, expanding, the ribs are all the way around the body. We think of only opening through the front, but you also want to expand around that out the back. And some of you may get a little lightheaded if you're not used to taking in this much breath, so you just go back to a normal breath. So now I want to start adding some body parts. On my inhale, I would like your shoulders to draw up towards your ear. 
and on your exhale, whenever that happens, depress the shoulders. So there's my natural placement. I want to actually go below the shoulders. And then inhale, lift. And exhale, lower. Oh, yes, you can see the flowers. I thought maybe you couldn't. Inhale, lift. Press. Some of you may have some shoulder issues, so be mindful how this feels. So we're just bringing a bit of motion. This is a dynamic way to move rather than static, which is what a lot of yoga is static, just standing or being in the pose. End up between the two, so neither up or neither down, just in between. Now we're gonna retract and protract. Don't worry about your arms. They're attached to the shoulders. They're likely to move. So when you breathe in, the shoulders draw back. And when you breathe out, the shoulders draw forward. So the body doesn't respond to this. Try, try and isolate through the shoulders. Expand through the chest. Expand through the back. So yoga invites you to take in the sensations. Maybe when your shoulders are forward, that maybe feels a little natural for you. And maybe when you're drawing your shoulder blades back, you feel more expansive, you feel more energized, you feel more open. Well, no one's gonna ask you to walk around like this, that would be silly. But on the other side, you don't wanna end up walking around like this with the whole world on your back. So now find that in-between spot, neither back, neither front but right in between. So now we've placed the shoulders. I call this home. So when I address the shoulders, I may say come home and this is what I'm talking about. So now I wanna do a little with my hands. Your room might be chilly. Feels a little chilly. I almost turned the fireplace on for you today. So take your hands and rub the palms together quickly. Create with some friction energy or chi. So you can feel, I'm about ready to get a fire going here. You're still standing like a mountain. And breathing, you feel your breath might uh, be a little different. And then slow this down and you feel that energy. And then part the hands ever so slightly so it's from holding the energy in your hands. Don't see it, just feel it. So shoulders remain home. Mountain pose elements remain there. And on your next breath in, float the arms to the side of your space. Keep reaching through the fingertips. Remember those shoulders may tend to draw up on you, so I'm gonna say hold them down, and lengthen through the tips of the fingers. Lift through the crown of your head. Feel that you're being stretched in many directions. And as you exhale, let the hands draw down. So that's a little bit for um, the arms and the shoulders. Now I want, I want you to hold the chair and separate your feet wider than the legs of the chair. And if you would, have your toes pointing forward rather than turning outward, as this is, this is the way. Mulabanda, mulabanda, that pelvic floor energy draws up. Still hold the belly and we're gonna begin some twisting. I know some of you should not twist, but you can turn your head. So if that's all you need to do, that would be good as well. So I'm keeping my hands here so that my arms don't go when I twist. So lift through the crown of the head and simply look off to the right. And notice how it feels. It may feel like easy peasy or you may have slept on your neck rung. And then maybe look a little behind you. So without turning the body too much, just look a little behind you. Find your breath. And then for those of you who might have a little more, can you look a little more behind you without moving your hands? And really look far in your eyeball sockets. It's almost uncomfortable, but look, and you may see your nose, so bonus. As you breathe out, come back and face front. Do the same thing other side. So when I say look, your eyes are really looking far off. Get nice and tall. Simply turn the head to the left. Ascertain the sensations. Maybe it's all good. Maybe you need to be a little prudent. And then a little further toward the corner as you look behind you.
Mindful to your breath. Can you look a little further? Inquiring minds want to know. Look really hard in your eyeball sockets. Take a breath in and when you exhale, return back center. So now we're gonna add a little twist. I'm gonna let my arms come out. They don't have to be up here. They're gonna be a little lower. Just don't bump into your chair. And this one is just kind of a, a, a swinging motion. So be aware of space. Karen has a fireplace behind. Be careful of the fireplace. So one arm will go back and one arm will go forward. So just kind of sway. It's your favorite thing to do, Marilyn, to sway. <laughs> We'll just kind of sway. My hips are going. If I stood away from the chair, you would see what happens through my torso. Careful of your knees. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit more to this. So pause when you come back into the front so you can see. So when I go off to the left, I'm going to take the right hand easily behind my head and let it drop. When I come back, I'll take my left hand behind my head and let it drop. So just adding some complexity to this movement. And I know part of it is going to be thinking, how do I do this? So just creating a little circle motion with your hand over your head. Play with it. There is no real perfection, so we just work where we're able. So let's do one more time to the right and one more time to the left. Okie doke. That should give you a little opening in your shoulders while you're making that rotation. Lovely. So you can stay behind the chair and put your hands on the back of the chair. I'm going to move out to the side so you can see what we're going to do. So my knees will bend a little bit since I want mobility through my pelvis. And I'm going to rock my hips from side to side. So it says that someone is pulling my hip on that side and then someone pulls my pants on that side. The rest of me stays still. So it's not me tipping over. This part stays still and I just rock my pelvis from side to side. Hold the upper body still. So however you need to ascertain this, you may need to touch your body to notice that you're not tipping over. It may help you to steady yourself with the hands on the chair and you feel your body touching your arms. Mula banda, mula banda, mula banda. So now we'll do the pelvic rock. You'll be hiding behind the chair. Not that I could see you anyway, but you want to drop the tailbone, move the pelvis forward, draw in through the belly, and then stick out the tailbone. You will recognize this as part of our cat and cow. I'm not using the upper body. I'm doing a pelvic rock, so the tailbone draws back. And then the tailbone tucks under, upper body does not respond. So this will, and you might notice your sacrum as it gets a nice long stretch. And now we'll do the hula. So now, we'll, and you just stay right there and do the hula. And I will inspire you with the hula. So just keep doing the hula. See? <laughs> So silly, so silly. Go the other direction. I get to look at that while I'm doing our class together. So you made your hips, um, hips go around. This one I can recommend in the morning when you feel kind of stiff getting out of your bed, that um, after you've gotten up and moved around a little, maybe had your morning coffee, just do this hula and then bring a little energy and kind of get the crankiness because you've just been laying on your bed and side and back all night, so there's that. Okay, step over to the right side of the chair. So we're going to begin a little hip work. Not only will the moving leg be working, the abductors open the leg, but the standing leg is important. You will be using your chair as a support if you choose. If you say, gee, this is really easy for me to do without holding the chair, I would say, okay. Some of you may have been told with a hip condition that your moving leg should never, you should never cross your legs. They'll just say, don't cross the legs because that makes an issue for your hip. If you've been told that, you just bring your foot forward of the standing leg. Otherwise, if you can, I want you to squeeze the moving leg across the standing leg. So position yourself with the chair that you're not so close that you might knock the chair over so it's here. 
All right, let's stand down as you're facing me on your left foot. Pull up, pull up, and then a light touch on the chair. There's gonna be a tendency for you to lean into the chair, so remind yourself to pull up, pull up, abduct or open the leg. Option one, to touch the floor. Option two, to lift the leg. As you lift the right leg, open the right arm. If you're feeling very confident, you can open the left arm. So this is the basis of inhale open. On the exhale close, go ahead and lightly touch the chair because you're gonna close the outside leg across toward the chair on the inside. Body will not move. And you wanna feel like you're squeezing. You could not put a hand between your legs. So inhale to open and exhale to close. And we're gonna do this many times. So this is just the basic of it, holding the chair, moving my leg from here to there. Keep pulling up or your standing leg is gonna yell at you more than it should. If you don't need the chair, you can hold the arms out and keep breathing. So the inhale would be to open the leg and the exhale is when it comes across and you squeeze and you use your belly to kind of really get the air out. Twice more. Keep your head up. Here's the last one. And close the posture, come home. Feels good to stand on two legs. So you see what I'm talking about, that standing leg. gets quite a bit of work. So we're working on balance as well as strengthening of our hips. Come on over the other side. Come on over the other side. Same setup here, root down now into your right leg. If you ever need to stop, I get that. This is a strengthening for your hips. So you, as you strengthen, you can do more. Root down on the right leg, light touch. Open the left leg. Again, you have the option to touch the floor or to lift the leg and then open the arm. It's like your ta-da moment. If you need the chair or don't need the chair, whatever, you're just kind of ascertaining the basis of this. As you exhale, close the leg across and it squeezes. And repeat, inhale to open and exhale to squeeze and close. I really feel my abdominal wall when I do this. If you don't need the chair, you don't have to use the chair. And squeeze across. Careful your body is not turning. There is a natural tendency for the body to say, oh, let me help you, I will turn. But don't let it help you. Breathe in and open. Breathe out and close. Two more, two more, two more. You can do it, you can do it. And then we'll do once more and we'll Release from the pose by standing on two feet and rest. So here's something you can do, because I know your back probably was working. Bend the knees, put your hands on your legs, and do what I call the Betty Boop. <laughs> if you used to come to my classes at the J, you would know. I'd say, this is the Betty Boop. So my knees are moving. It feels kind of good to your back. Keep some energy in your legs. Okay, we're going to go back to the first side. I'm going to add a, a, a new element. So if you thought holding the chair, tapping the foot on the floor, or lifting it and moving across was all you wanted to do, do that again. If you thought you could maybe let go of the chair and try it this way, or you did it this way last time, do it again. Here's the new element. So when my right leg is out, my left arm is up, my right arm is down. You know I love diagonal lines. So this would be breathe in, then I swap the arm, so my right arm goes up, and this is breath out. So you see, I have this motion going, if you can. So you've got three variations. Pick the one you like the best, position yourself mindfully, the bunda, we'll be on the action, lift up. As you open the arms, with or without the chair, open the right leg. You, again, using the floor, I'm gonna give the new one. As my left arm goes up and I lift the right leg, and as I exhale, cross over. So my torso has to remain still because if I start leaning, I'll tip myself over. So if you use the chair, use the chair. If you don't use the chair, don't need the chair, that's okay. Just use your breath and I want you to work on work in the hips. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze when you cross. Couple more. Feel nice and tall. Let's make this the last one. Would you hold the last one just for a moment longer? 
and close the posture. So you should feel your hips when you do that. A little bit of back, come on over other side. How you doing, Ken? Good morning to Ken. He's wearing a new shirt today. Okay, root down into the earth. Extend out your leg, pulling up, open your left arm, stay here, go here or here. As ready, inhale, lift that leg if you're going to, don't lean over. Exhale, cross. Inhale, open, pull up, pull up. Exhale, close. So this is the dynamics that I was talking about. We move through the poses rather than just stay in the pose. Squeeze your legs, couple more. Inhale, open, wherever that is defined for you. Exhale, close. Okay, last one, hold the inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and close the posture. Ooh, let's do the Betty Boop. <laughs> so bend the knees and move the legs in a circle. Feels good to the back. And then we're going to take a seat. Please no plopping. When you sit, lower swiftly onto the seat of the chair. So think up while you're going down. Now, if you're not sure if the chair is there, you can touch it. Otherwise, feel it and then release into your muscles. Okay, so sitting back so everybody can see my feet. So I'm going to do some undulations. It's a variation on the cat and cow. So maybe you have to be a little careful on the mobility of your spine. Osteoporosis is a concern for this one. So maybe, and I'll turn a little on the side for you to see, maybe you're the person who just goes a little forward, tightens the belly and comes back. Maybe you can go a little further, round through the back. I'm okay with you using the head because we're not going that fast. It's, it's kind of like a, a slow whiplash motion. So get nice and tall, breathe in, lean your heart forward. Exhale, tighten the belly, bow the head, and roll back. Inhale, lift the spine, lift the heart, chest leads forward. Exhale, tighten the belly, bow the head, and roll back. Gosh, that feels good to me today. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, forward fold as you round over and roll back. Once more, inhale, lift. Exhale, lean forward, tighten the belly, bow, and round back. So that feels pretty yummy. And you know, you could do that. A lot of these things that we do in our program, you can do anytime. If you're feeling a little cranky here, 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 wherever, you just say, oh, I remember I did this and it made things feel so much better. Okay, so we're going to open and do a seated warrior position, opening my left leg so that it points out to the left. So however you configure your leg, however you configure your body, so the knee and foot, knee above the foot, pointing off to the left. Now there is going to be a, a lifting and you're going to take your right leg in front of the chair, but back to the side, not in front. So as I turn, being mindful of my knee, I kind of lift out of the chair, I stretch my foot back, it may help you to lean forward so that I can drop my heel. So I'm sitting toward the front of the chair. If you feel a little nervous about this, hold on to the seat of the chair. So knee over ankle, back leg is straight. Look at your feet, but the leg that's back behind you is not off in front but it's also not back behind the chair, that would be weird. So honestly, if I drew a line in the carpet from the front heel, it would match up with the heel of my back foot. So let's go ahead and put that left hand on the left thigh. We'll live under Woody on action. So turn your chest toward that left thigh and reach your right arm forward. Relax through the shoulders. Now if you're on the other side, just translate. So I'm going to breathe in, turn to the front of the chair, opening my arm, watch it as it goes behind, feel that your knee doesn't try and come with you. Exhale, turn the palm down and reach forward again. Relax your shoulder. So I turn, lift my spine nice and tall, opening my chest. And this is not a twist, so Edie, you should be okay with this one. Inhale, open, relax through the shoulders, palm up, look behind you. 
This would be like our warrior two, and this is with the arm forward like warrior one. So we'll do one more dynamic, then we'll go more passive. Inhale, open. Exhale, I want you to close and leave the arms forward. Bring that thumb up. Now, depending on how your back feels, root your feet down a little more into the floor than you might already be doing. Can you take the other arm up? You might not be able to, and that's okay. If you need the hand down to make it feel better for your back, do that. Now, keep looking at your left hand. We know where the right hand is going to go. As you open your body to the side of the chair and reach back behind, both your thumbs are up. So, Virabhadrasana 2. Your shirt is facing forward like you would sit in the chair. Bring the right arm back around in front. Drop the hands down on your thigh. Pivot on the ball of the back foot so the heel comes up. Drag that back foot forward as you lean. Don't fall out of your chair. Forward, and then you can come out of it safely because your feet are under you. How'd it go? How'd it go over there? Okay. <laughs> C plus. We're not grading, but yeah, it's a new move. So you see, we tasted the poses we do a lot. Warrior one, Virabhadrasana one, and warrior two. Warrior one, when your hips are facing forward, and open in warrior two. So open the right leg. So I'm sitting on the chair. So I call this the front of the chair, because that's where we sit. Now my right leg is to the side, knee over ankle. There's not a lot of weight on it, but the alignment is still important. What's really nice about the chair is when you turn into warrior two, this knee doesn't tend to buckle. Plus your hand is gonna be there to feel, feel it initially. So lean a little forward, use your chair, and take that left leg. I usually turn my knee under, kind of slide it back, and then drop my heel down. Position yourself so you are comfortable on the chair. You're at the front of the chair. If you don't have to be, you know, if you're a short-legged person sitting in the middle of the chair toward the back, it's going to be a bit broad for your hips to so sit up toward the corner. Look at where your feet are placed. Just check it all out. That back toe is not forward. It's kind of going on the angle. Okay, put both your hands on the right leg. Can you put a little pressure on the feet? I'm not going to say lift out of the chair, but maybe you could. All right, right hand will stay. Lift nice and tall. The shoulders come home. Do you remember where home is? Ula Bandha Uddiyana action, extend a left arm forward, palm up. As you breathe in, watch the arm, but keep the right knee still. Watch the arm as you graciously reach behind you. That will turn your body, turn the palm down, and bring it back in front of you. Inhale to open, and exhale to close. Work within the parameters of you. You don't have to be me. We don't want any more of me. I'm enough. I'm enough. So just notice the change of what happens in warrior two. And then next time, we're going to leave the arm forward. Leave the left arm forward. Make a little more rooting of your feet into the ground than you may have had. Shoulders are home. Bring both arms forward, thumbs up. If this is too much, put the right hand down. It might be. So you determine. Can you stay upright? And if you need to put the hand, do so. Don't watch your left hand. It's going to go back where it was. You're going to look forward. So one arm going to the right, one arm going to the left. Shoulders are home. Feel the earth through your feet. Virabhadrasana too. And bringing that arm back around. Lean forward onto the thigh. I lift my back heel up, turn. Maybe grab the chair and drag your back leg up. And then, then you can get out of it pretty safe. Okay, so let's go to that hip stuff I was talking about. All the standing that we did opening our legs, that put work into the hips. So now we're going to stretch them. This can help you feel better along with the hamstring that we'll do at the very end um, from all the sitting you might be doing. So sitting toward the end of the chair. Now I know some of you will be restricted from doing this. Um, I didn't notice anyone in the names that I'm aware of should do the crossed ankle, but you can do a crossed ankle. This is for people who said don't do this or cannot do this. You can cross the ankles, you lift really tall. With this one, you have to go pretty far forward in order to affect your hip. 
So here's the simplest one most of us do. Lean back a little. So you have a foot below the knee. Now you take the other ankle and put it atop the thigh. So you can lean back to help you get that leg up. That could be helpful. Now some of you will be very tight in the hips and your knee might stay here, or some of you might have that leg drop down, whatever. And then hold on to your leg. You can hold the shin or if you need to, hold around the leg. Now lift up through the crown of the head. Use the hands to pull yourself away from the back of the chair. As you do that, the hips might begin to say good morning and good morning to you. So if this is enough for you, stay here. If you wanted to bring your heart, not your head forward, you could lean out, breathing and being exploratory. And so our focus is on the right hip. Your foot on the thigh is very active. It's not just limp. So let it be like, you know, very flat there. Some of you might want a little bit more. And so instead of just going forward, move a little toward the foot direction. So you might want to lean that way. You, you may not need that. You may be sitting up tall going, look, this is enough for me. So again, work within the parameters of where your body is today. Okay, come back up. Mindfully offload that leg and move to the other side. So maybe the other side you need the option. Otherwise, line up your foot under your knee, because sometimes people do it this way. So have the foot under the knee, top leg comes up. If you're leaning back to the chair, bring yourself upright. Keep lifting, don't settle for less. If you can, a little forward hinge from the hip. Find your breath. When we hold our postures, words like relax, let go, allow, surrender, those kind of words kind of comfort you because it might be a little uncomfortable, never painful, shouldn't be painful. Why would we do that? Comfort, discomfort's okay, I think. So if you're leaning forward and this side needs a little more, if, that, if you are that person, lean a little off toward the foot side of the room, that will, uh, of the side, that will give you a little more. Turn back center, tighten the belly, lift yourself, offload the standing leg. Okay, that's our first option. And I think you can do that again and again still, as you wish. Or here's the standing version. So if you have not done this one, I'll just do it really quickly. And then if you've done it with me, just wait a second, we'll do it together. I'm using the chair, which we know is not really all that stable. I'll replicate pretty much what I did in the chair, but instead of sitting, I'm gonna sit back while standing. So it's kind of like being in chair pose. I put my foot above my knee on my thigh. I push my hips back, keep my chest up. So now I've added an element of balance, don't you know? Now you can use the chair as you wish. You can let go of the chair and challenge your balance. You could look like you're doing yoga by putting your hands at your heart. Wherever you are, you should be feeling the right hip. If you're not getting it, go ahead and sit back down and put yourself in a place where you are getting it. So then stand yourself up, release the foot, stand on two feet, and kind of like move your knees a little if that helps. This one might affect blood pressure. So if you're on some um, blood pressure meds and you're leaning forward and you come up, you may feel like a little, remember you always sit down. Let's do the other side. I, I'm going to go the other side because when I do this, I don't want to bump into the chair. So I'm always moving from side to side. Okay, as you're able, place foot above the knee. Sit the hip back. Lean the chest forward. You can keep your hand on the chair. The chair shouldn't be back here. This is not going to be as helpful as you knowing where the chair back is, or the seat of the chair, or your hands at your heart. And breathe. One more breath. And stand all the way up. 
and release the pose. So now that's our second option. We're going to do it one more time. Feel free to go back to the chair, feel free to come up to the standing one, or the third one, which is not going to be for most of you, is to use the seat of the chair from the front approaching it. And you're going to place your shin across, so there'll be a foot here and a knee here. Now it's a little, it's a little risky just even getting into the chair, so let me show you first and you can find your own way. So one leg is going to be back here on the ball of the foot. The other leg will come up, I'll put my knee on the chair. So here's my foot on one side of the chair and here's my knee on the other side of the chair. If you look at this and go, I'm not going to do that, fine. You've got two other options. If you're doing this one, wiggle your foot or slide your foot back so that you have a foot on one side and the knee on the other, and the back leg is straight, well, not the knee bent, back leg straight. You could hold the hands on the chair, and what this does is your hip can sink below, below the seat of the chair, so you get really into that hip. And then if you wanted more, like we do in pigeon pose on the floor, I would reach forward and put my head down. So go ahead and either sit in the chair or stand by the chair like we did previously, or move yourself into the seat of the chair so one of your bums is <laughs> hanging off the chair, and then take five breaths wherever you are. So mindfully come out of where you are. If you're at the chair, you might want to like just hop that back leg up a little bit, lean on the chair so you can take your leg off ever so carefully. I bet some of you have done the traditional pigeon pose on the floor, but you know, this is a chair yoga class, so we're using this option. I'm going to just stay as I am so you see what it looks like on the other side. So either from the seat of the chair, from the side of the chair, or position yourself so that the knee is on one side of the chair, your foot is on the other, and your foot goes back behind you. And you may be able to do this on one side but not on the other, so sort it out for yourself. So I'm lifting up my chest, I'm feeling my bum kind of sink down below. And then if you have a back of chair you want to hold on this, stay up. If you feel like you need to go forward and have a little more, you just decide. Five breaths wherever you are. you come to your last breath, be aware of your bandhas as you lift yourself upright and exit from wherever you are. Oh wait, that's not going to work. I have my hand in there. Okay, so we're going to finish with our hamstrings and there again will be an option for some of you. It's a balance one, so if you feel like, well, I've done enough balance and my balance is not so great today, you'll want to do the seated one sitting at the front of the chair. If you want to stay up, you don't want to lift the leg that's toward the back of the chair, because if you lift it and get it commingled in the back of the chair, and then you tumble, then you don't have a good chance of getting your foot back under you. So if you're going to use the chair, I use the outside leg to go onto the seat of the chair, lift up my chest, and lean forward. Ugh, hello hamstrings. If that looks a bit more than you're up for today, sit at the chair. I'll go angle so you can see and extend the leg. And this leg has to go straight because if it's bent, you won't feel the hamstring. And just like the standing, you lift nice and tall and you lean forward. So this could be uh, really good if you're tight in the hamstrings because you, you can get a little further forward when you're seated. When you're standing, you don't go very far forward at all because the back of the leg is already being pulled by you standing up and elevating the leg. So try not to let the body turn, lean forward as if your heart is going to your thigh, because your body will look for all sorts of cheating ways to find itself. So Uttanasana is the term forward fold, folding pose. So you lean forward, some of you might be able to go further than others, remember we're not a competition here. So wherever you go is wherever you go. If you're not feeling the back of the leg, reevaluate your form. Five breaths. If 
Ready on action, something to think about. Roll yourself up as you come to that last breath. Be aware of blood pressure. Release and do the other side. So if you're standing, you do want to come around on the other side so you don't have that leg bumping into the back of the chair. Face the chair. Lift up nice and tall or present your leg on the floor and lift up nice and tall. Body is facing to the extended leg. You lift with the heart. Lean a little forward. And the back of the leg says, good morning to you. <laughs> relax through the neck and the shoulders. Remember your mantra in these held poses. Relax, let go, allow, surrender, release. Be with your breath, four more. Mindfully bring yourself back up. If you're standing, offload that extended leg. And let's all come back and sit at the chair. And we're going to be leaning back. So I, don't, I usually turn sideways, but I'm not going to go that far back. Maybe what I should do is show you by turning my chair how I'm positioning. And you know, all of our chairs are the same, and some of us have cushions, and some of, some of us don't. So when you're sitting, rather than feeling that you're rolling back toward the tailbone, oh, right away, I dumped into my back. So you want to sit up on the sit bones, because they're called the sit bones. So sit on the sit bones, lift up your chest, you'll relieve a lot of back pressure. So I don't want to be there. I'm going to draw in through the belly. I'm going to keep that natural curve in my spine, because I'm sitting on my sit bones. Relaxing my neck and shoulders. The feet must stay on the floor, so you have more protection with the back of the chair behind you. And we're not going to go that far, but let's do the simplest abdominal work for us. Arms lift as you extend. Keep the chest lifted. Keep the abs in. Keep the back neutral. Begin to lean back. You may feel the chair, but don't rest on it. So if you feel the chair, come away from it just a little. I can feel my ponytail is touching, so I'm going to stop right there. Draw in the belly. Mula Bandha. Just gaze off the tips of your fingers. Remember, hold that pillow between your legs. You have some good work through your core. Now, if you're feeling the challenge here, I want you to just stay here and keep breathing. If you'd like a little more challenge, let the hands move up to about where a wall would meet a ceiling. Like my ceiling's way up there, so I'm gonna lift a little higher. My shoulder is down, I'm lifting my heart, I'm feeling my core work. So we're gonna stay here in all breeze. Your arms may be in front, they may be higher. One more option for those of you who say, I need more challenge today, Karen. Don't change the parameters you've already set. Feel free to put one hand or maybe two hands on the head. If you begin to put the weight of your other arm and you fall back, don't do that. Stay where you are, use this option. If your abdominal wall can hold you here, or this option, or this option. Take two breaths. Move your hands forward. There's the bar. Grab the bar and pull yourself up and relax. So we'll do that just one last time and know which one you want to go to. Here, 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 wherever you want to go. And you may be feeling your hip flexors. They're not part of your abdominal wall, but yes, they will kick in. So little bend it, Uddiyana action. Inhale, lift nice and tall, float the arms forward, lean back, decide where you want to be, and breathe. Keep your shoulders at home. Pull in your belly button, pull in your belly button. Find the bar. Where's that bar? Grab that bar and pull yourself up and then rest on your forearms all the way down on your thighs. Lean way out here so your back is neutral. Feels good, doesn't it? Maybe move your head around side to side, up and down a few times. So you can stay here for Shavasana. You can just kind of let yourself release and relax. Some of you might prefer to sit up and sit back into the chair. Some of you might want to lay down on the floor. 
Those of you who access the floor and put your feet up and relax here, don't worry, I'll wake you back up. <laughs> if you fall asleep, I'll wake you back up. So we're going into Shavasana. We're going to that quiet time where we do nothing. So if your room is a little chilly and you've gotten warm, but now you're starting to feel cool, feel free to put something on. So you're just gonna take a moment to breathe, to do nothing. And this might be one of the more useful parts of yoga practice, Shavasana. So as you lay or sit, lower your eyes and step away from all that you've been doing. And just be with your breath. Feel the heaviness of your body. Now, as you're resting physically, your mind now, might then now start to find uh, stuff to do. And that's where the practice of Shavasana comes in. So maybe you just think of being at the ocean or out in the desert or up in the mountains. So now you do nothing, pushing the thoughts away for just a few moments allowing this time to be yours. So deepen the breath, maybe wiggle your fingers and toes, put yourself together. You can stay where you are. You can sit yourself up. Our thoughts for us today, a quote from John F. Kennedy, who said, the problems of the world cannot possibly be solved by skeptics or cynics whose horizons are limited by the obvious realities. We need men and women who can dream of things that never were. If solving problems just meant doing the same thing we always do, we'd all be problem free. To solve problems in our personal lives or in the world, we sometimes need wild creativity and we need ideas that seem crazy at first. Some of those wild ideas won't work and maybe most of them won't work, but any problem only needs one solution. So thought for us today, how can I get myself out of a rut when I'm trying to deal with a problem? I'll stop censoring myself and look beyond the horizon of obvious realities. So there's that. So go ahead and set yourself up nice and tall. Open your arms by your side. Take a breath in and fill yourself with all the strength and all the creativity within you. Place the hands at the heart. Sharing that simple word means the goodness in me, honors the goodness in you. We say namaste. Have a lovely day. Um, for those of you that do the Monday class, but maybe wasn't here on Monday, the reminder if you didn't get the email is that um, there are no virtual classes on Monday. So you should do some of the other classes um, that are on the YouTube that's at the bottom of the email you get. Happy so. Holidays. So with that said, enjoy the holidays. Happy New Year. Namaste.